1873 Negotiations Lieutenant Governor Alexander Morris opened the negotiations with these words. I am very glad to be here today among the Queen's subjects I see before me. I have been sent here with Mr. Provencher to see you all, to shake hands with you, and wish you well. I can tell you that the Queen has always loved her Indian subjects. She is always kind to them, and they have been kind to her in return. She has sent me to see you. The reason I am here today is that the Queen's government wished to have a treaty with you and to take you by the hand and never let your hand go. The primary negotiators for the Anishinaabe were Chief Mawendopanes from Rainy River and Chief Pawasang from Lake of the Woods. Others who spoke were Chief Blackstone from Lac de Milac and Chief Sakachaway from Lac Sewell. Chief Pawasong spoke. We take it to be a great thing to meet you here. We think that the Great Spirit has planted us here and that it is our property. He has given us rules that we should follow to govern it rightly. We have understood that you have opened all your heart to us. Now I lay down the opinion of those you see before you. The chiefs resubmitted their 1869 list of provisions and stated that if the 20 conditions were met, they would make treaty with the Queen's commissioners. Among these conditions were the following. $50 annuity for chiefs, $10 annuity for everyone else, a suit of clothes for every chief annually, a one-time gift of a team of horses, buggy and harness, guns and ammunition for the men, fishing line for the women, numerous provisions for agriculture, including wheat, peas, various garden seeds, a yoke of oxen and plow, cows and a bull. Morris laid out what the government was willing to offer. Reserves for farms and other use, up to one square mile per family of five. Schools, $20 annuity for chiefs, $5 annuity for every one of your wives and children, one-time payment of $10, final offer of gifts and provisions. While the offer was significantly less than what the chiefs wanted, it was enough that it was not initially rejected by them. They decided to discuss the offer in council and to meet again the following morning. The following day, discussions continued. The chiefs pushed for their interests, Morris countered that he was only able to offer what he had been authorized by the Queen. He refused to yield and threatened to go without making terms. The stalemate was broken by Chief Sakachoe, who expressed a willingness to accept the treaty terms in exchange for some further assistance and implements. Another council was held, and the Métis who accompanied the commissioners were invited to join the chiefs. Their role in the eventual signing of the treaty is difficult to say. However, it was understood that they supported the terms offered by the government. The signing. When negotiations resumed, Chief Mawadopanis indicated their intention to accept the terms, but asked Morris about your most liberal terms and give us your utmost. Morris offered farming tools and seeds for growing crops. He promised ammunition and a one-time gift of $12 for every person and a suit of clothes for all the chiefs every three years. There were other concessions made as well. Chief Mawadopinus closed with these words. The words I have said are the words of the nation and have not been said in secret, but openly so all could hear. And I trust that those who are not present will not find fault with what we are about to do today. And I trust what we are about to do today is for the benefit of our nation as well as for our white brothers, that nothing but friendship shall reign between the nation and our white brothers. And now I take off my glove to give to you my hand and sign the treaty. Provisions of the Treaty Tract of Land 
The Soto tribe of the Ojibwe Indians and all other Indians inhabiting the district here and after described and defined do hereby cede, release, surrender, and yield up to the government of the Dominion of Canada for Her Majesty the Queen and her successors forever all their rights, titles, and privileges whatsoever to the lands including within the following limits, comprised of 55,000 square miles. Reserves Land will be laid aside and reserved for the benefit of the Indians within those limits that are deemed most convenient and advantageous for each band. Such reserves not to exceed one square mile for each family of five on in that proportion for larger or smaller families. Chief salaries. $25 per annum. Suit of clothes every three years flag and medal in recognition of the treaty. Subordinate officer, not to exceed three per band, $15 per annum. Hunting and fishing, $1,500 per annum to purchase twine for nets and ammunition. Rights to purchase hunting and fishing throughout the land subject to such regulations as may be from time to time made by her government of her Dominion of Canada and saving and accepting such tracts as may from time to time be required or taken up for settlement, mining, lumbering or other purposes by her said government of the Dominion of Canada or by any of the subjects thereof duly authorized therefore by the said government. Agriculture Two hoes, one spade, one scythe for every family actually cultivating. One plow for every ten families, five harrows for every twenty families. One axe, one cross saw, one hand saw, one pit saw, necessary files, one grindstone, one auger for each band. One chest of ordinary carpenter's tools. Enough wheat, barley, potatoes and oats to plant. For each band, a yoke of oxen, one bull, and four cows. Payment on conclusion of treaty. $12 for each man, woman, and child represented by the bands present. Education. Maintain schools for instruction in such reserves deemed advisable whenever the Indians of the reserve shall desire it. Liquor prohibition. Until otherwise determined by the government, no intoxicating liquor shall be allowed to be introduced or sold. Annuity, $5 per person. Signatories of the Treaty. For the Anishinaabe, signed by 24 chiefs. Keteke Penes from Rainy River. Kichike Kake from Rainy River. Not Nakwahung from Northwest Angle. Maui Dopanes from Rainy River, Pawa Sung from Northwest Angle, Kandakama Go Windene from Northwest Angle, Papsko Gin from Rainy River, Menowa Taweskung Northwest Angle, Kichinika Bayan from Rainy River, Sakachawe from Lak Sul, Makadewa Sin from Kettle Falls, Mikisis from Rainy River Fort Francis, Uskongeish from Rainy River, Wajiskus from Eagle Lake, Kakiyash from Flower Lake, Kametiash from Whitefish Lake, Nishotel from Rainy River, Kijikoke Rainy River, Shashagans from Shoal Lake, Shawanobanes from Shoal Lake, Ea Shawash from Buffalo Point, Pea Bewash from Whitefish Bay, Katete Pokach from Lake of the Woods. For the Crown, Alexander Morris, Lieutenant Governor of Manitoba and the Northwest Territories, Simon J. Dawson, Richard Pither, Nicholas Shadlin and James McKay.